Yo, what's up my internet friends? Um, I've got some wine here and we're gonna have a chat. Today I'm gonna be talking about um, just like crazy and funny interactions I've had with the public um, to me and my service dog who is currently asleep right now so I'm gonna let her nap but um, my first story comes from my trip to Disney World when I was with another handler and um, we're walking down the sidewalk or the like path and Tarzan and his handler are coming towards us um, and he starts pointing at me and saying, she can't see, she can't see. And I'm a little taken aback. I think that he thinks that I'm blind and Esther is a guide dog. And so he's just like pointing that out. And I look down and I realize that the headband with Minnie Mouse ears that my dog was wearing had fallen in front of her face. And in typical Esther fashion, she didn't say anything. Like, she just kept walking. And I, I was looking up because Tarzan's coming. And so I, I didn't notice it. But he was saying that my dog can't see because her headband had fallen. Um, and that was just really funny because I was, I was so offended at first. I would be like, if even if I was blind, like, I would be really upset. Someone just, like, yelling that out. You know what I mean? But that was a <laughs> just a simple, funny encounter. Um, when I was with my friend at Disney World. Um, what's next? I have my phone that has um, uh, notes. Oh, okay. So, next story. This isn't like a direct interaction with the public, but um, my dog is 75% lab and 25 percent poodle so she's kind of like a lab that's stretched out and she's not skinny anymore but she used to be really skinny especially as a puppy and in her teenage awkward years her legs were so long um but she was perfectly healthy she had regular vet um yeah vet visits and you know was weighed and she's perfectly healthy and one day i get a call from a police officer and he says, like, hey, are you home? Can I come by? And I was like, yeah, sure, I guess. Am, am I in trouble? And he was like, well, I guess we'll see. And I was like, what? Like, I haven't done anything, like, illegal. Um, and the cop shows up and tells me that somebody had filed a complaint that my dog was being abused as she was too skinny and being neglected. And, um... So he knocks on the door and of course Esther's at the door like, you know, full body wiggles, so excited to see him, you know, full of energy, super shiny coat, just happy. And he was like, yeah, this dog, this dog's happy. This dog's fine. Like if we get a complaint, we just, we have to, we have to investigate. <laughs> and he asked me, um, he asked me what she ate and I was like, she gets four cups of this and this food an egg and yogurt every night and i was in college this is my second year of college i was like bro i've had cheese it's for the past four meals like <laughs> my dog eats better than i do and he just laughed and was like yeah yeah like this dog is fine like again we just have to we just have to investigate um but still like somebody called the cops on me because my dog was too skinny and i kind of understand because she she does look like a lab um, but she's not a lab. She's a lab and poodle mix. So she's skinny for a lab, but she's not a lab. And this was when she was like 18 months old, I think. So like <laughs> going through crazy teenage growth spurts, she was a lanky, skinny little thing, but she did fill out. She got, she got big. She was, she's grown inches and put on 10 pounds, like. <laughs> She weighs like 70 pounds now. She was probably like 55, 60 at the time. She was tiny, but perfectly healthy. She was just growing. Um, <laughs> my second story, or my third story. Yeah. My third story comes from when I had first gotten Esther 
um, that summer actually. <laughs> I got her in like May and so I trained her for the summer months before I went back to school. And of course training never stops, but we were in training at the time. And I was at a restaurant with uh, my ex and we had been there for about 15 minutes before two other ladies came and sat in the booth directly in front of us. Um, and we were there probably about 45 minutes. We were there for an hour, but like 45 minutes since they had gotten there. I'm like, totally fine. And as soon as we get up to leave and Esther comes out, one of the women goes, oh, a dog, I'm allergic. And <laughs> I just stared at her. The, the woman with her just stared at her. The waiter stopped and stared at her. And everyone was like, you were five feet away for this, from this dog for 45 minutes and you're just now having a reaction because you saw that she was there. Like we were the table next to you and she was under the booth and you didn't notice her. Um, that, that one just stuck with me because that one was so funny and everybody around, like she made a, a little bit of a scene, like that's all she said, like she didn't push the issue further and you know, we were on our way out, but literally people were like, you for real? <laughs> so yeah, that's my third story. <laughs> my fourth and final story is a good one. So this is when I still lived in Texas and I went down to Dallas to have a meetup with a few other handlers at the Dallas Zoo. <laughs> and me and my friend who I actually happened to go to Disney World with um, when she lived in Fort Worth, um, this was when she lived in Fort Worth. Actually, she lived in Fort Worth the whole time, so I don't know what I'm saying, but she lived in Fort Worth when we were going to the Dallas Zoo. So I met up with her first, and we were gonna park off, I was gonna park my car, um, and like somewhere off the zoo property, and she met me there and drove me so that we'd only have to pay for one car. And we were a little bit late, and so I think there was like two or three other handlers were already there in the park and they had they had been exploring so they were at the back of the park when we get in there and I'm walking in and with my friend and we both have dogs next to us and this woman stops me and she says your trainer friends are so rude and I was like who what and she was like there's handlers in the back who were so mean to me like you should tell them to be respectful and I kind of I, this was a while ago so I don't exactly remember what I said but I remember saying like one just because I have a service dog doesn't mean I'm associated with them um because I had no idea who she was talking about it turned out that she <laughs> she ended up being right about that it was our <laughs> handler friends but that was pure coincidence like there was nothing to indicate that just because I had a service dog that I was in any way in relationship with the people who also had a service dog in the park because we weren't the only service dogs. There was nothing to say that we were with them. Um, and so I said, you know, like, I don't know who you're talking about. That could be anybody. And then I kind of tried to go into the fact of like, well, you know, some handlers may have social incapacities, they might have things like autism where they just, their interactions might not seem what you want them to be, but they are not necessarily trying to be rude, like things like that, or handlers might have a bad day, that's my whatever, and she was like, no, 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 my son has autism, so I know what autism is like, and you know, he's not rude to people, whatever, and I finally just had to end it and be like, listen lady, I'm not in control of anybody else's actions. Like, I didn't say anything rude to you, my friend didn't say anything rude to you, why are you yelling at me? And, you know, she finally left, but this was like a decent, decently long um, conversation with her that I had. I probably shouldn't have, have kept it as long as I did, but I was, I was feeling good. I was like pumped for the Handler meetup and, you know, I was having a good day. I'd driven to Dallas, so, you know, I was like, okay, I'll stop and talk. Whatever, <laughs> we make it. Um, she finally leaves and we walk back to the back of the zoo and <laughs> me and my friend were both like, what did you say? And they're like, what are you talking about? And I was like, this lady stopped me and said that these trainers in the park were so rude. Was that you? And they just, they just busted out laughing. And one of my friends was like, yeah, so 
this lady walked by and she said nice shoes about the dogs and oh no she said um oh they're wearing shoes and one of the replies oh you're wearing shoes and apparently that's what they had said that was so rude that she had gotten so irate about um so now i call that friend rude shoes so that's how one of my friends got the name rude shoes because it was rude to this lady and who saw me later and took it out on me um but yeah those are my four stories for now um the cop tarzan uh fruit shoes and the lady at the table those are like the only ones i can think of off the top of my head right now but those have been my crazy interactions with my service dog in public if you've had any funny crazy interactions with people um about your service dog in public um let me know because these stories can be really funny some people are just they see a dog and like all thinking goes out the window like they don't know how to talk to a human being because there's a dog in the room um and like and the last story kind of <laughs> like indicates like just because i have a service dog doesn't mean like i am know everybody who has a service dog and or are responsible for their behavior like i don't know like oh a handler was rude to me in the past like okay well i'm not that handler so if you meet one handler you've met one handler i think isaac's come back out of his hibernation isaac is that you maybe it's esther trying to get out maybe she's done with her nap but I should go check on that. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Come here. Come up here. Yeah, she's awake. She's awake. Esther, look over here. Look over there. Yeah. Your internet friends. It's your internet friends. Love me. Love me. Mais c'est mon